This is Steve Robbins. Welcome to the Get It Done Guys Quick and Dirty Tips to Work Less and Do More. It's back to school time. Europa's son, Thomas, who we all think is a cyborg, though she's never confirmed nor denied this, is preparing to return to high school for the year. Well, he's being troublesome. That means lazy. Now, we think he can apply himself more, and since we're grown-ups, we must be right. Europa says, well, he's just a teenager and we shouldn't worry about it. But I'm not so sure. Parents can make a big difference when it comes to how kids do in school. When it's time for homework, Thomas is right on it. And by it, I mean his smartphone. Playing games where he gets to take over huge kingdoms and build factories and hire peasants and go to war. I guess like mother, like son. What he isn't doing, however, is homework. When I point out that his algebra is due tomorrow, he doesn't even look up. I'm smart. I don't have to prove it, he mumbles. And therein lies the problem. I've been reading about smart. Yeah, there's probably a genetic component to certain aspects of intelligence. I mean, at the very least, people do have different thinking styles, and different styles are going to be good for different tasks. But genetics is just the beginning. Actual performance has more to do with practice and risk-taking and hard work and effort and all those things that we would rather avoid in favor of taking over kingdoms on our smartphone. Psychologist Carol Dweck has discovered that the language you use when praising someone can have a huge effect on their performance. And it's paradoxical. Whenever Thomas comes home with good homework scores, Europa tells him, Oh, you're so smart. You're the smartest son any mother ever had. I should know. I made you myself. From Thomas's point of view, however, this praise is a prison. If he only succeeds because he's smart, well, then if he tries something new and fails, it must mean it's hopeless because he's smart. And obviously, even a smart person couldn't do it. Even more insidious, if Thomas fails, maybe it means he's not smart after all. I mean, if smart is an important part of his identity, he will go to great lengths not to challenge that, even if it means failing deliberately. Deliberate failure might be subtle. It might be not feeling like doing my homework or preferring to play a video game. But at least it's under Thomas's control. He would rather be a smart person deliberately deciding to fail than someone who tries but isn't smart enough to succeed. Telling someone you're smart praises their identity, and it makes smart being about an innate quality. If you praise someone this way, they will give up more easily, they will take fewer risks, and they will avoid challenges. They view their abilities as an unchanging, innate aspect of who they are, and furthermore, you're telling them that their results depend on this innate thing. They don't want to risk going outside the areas where they know they can succeed. There's another way to praise. Praise the effort, not the person. If Thomas comes home with a perfect score on his homework, say, A perfect score! That's wonderful! You must have studied very hard and really applied yourself. People whose effort is praised apply themselves more, take more risks, and view setbacks as surmountable and temporary. Praising effort is your first step, but take it to the next level and help your child learn from their mistakes. The U.S. Army does war game simulation. After each simulation, they debrief the battle in detail in an after-action review. There, they review all the decisions that everyone made and decide how they'll approach the situation differently next time. When your child gets a poor grade or doesn't win an award or contest, sit down with them and have an after-action review. Instead of saying, you should have studied more, ask them, what do you think you could have done differently to get a better grade or win the award? Get them in the habit of reviewing their own situation and coming up with a new action plan to do better next time. This will train them to learn on an ongoing way from their mistakes. Even more subtly, help them learn from their successes. In today's every-child-must-win-an-award-for-everything environment, when your child wins an award, also do an after-action review. Ask them things like, why do you think you won this? Does it mean anything? Do you deserve it? Why or why not? Do this with a spirit of genuine exploration with your child, and remember to help your student think in terms of effort and focus, not in terms of innate ability. If they say, well, Sandeep won first place because Sandeep is just smarter than I am, ask, how much do you think Sandeep studied? Did Sandeep practice more than you? Help your child realize that, yes, people have innate strengths, but determined learning can often be the deciding factor much more than innate ability. Now, sometimes kids truly do get stuck with a scholastic or social situation. Don't just solve it for them willy-nilly or even give them the answer right away. Let them learn to solve their own problems, but make yourself available as they want you involved. Say, you seem pretty stuck. I'm here as a resource. How do you want to solve your homework or school or social problem with me as a resource? They may still ask you to step in and step them through a solution, but they'll have ownership of the process rather than you doing it for them. And every now and then, you may want to say, I'd rather not help you just yet. I believe you can do this on your own. 
when I was really young, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory was supposed to be on TV. And instead, a football game was running, preempting the TV show. I was upset, and I complained to my father. Don't complain to me, he said. Call the TV station and tell them. He showed me how to use a phone book. I looked up the TV station, called, and complained. Yes, it was still a joint parent-child project, but it was one that taught me independence. It took two decades and $43,000 worth of therapy, but gosh darn it, it taught me independence. I taught Europa these key principles. Praise the effort, not the person. Help them learn from failure and from success, and let them drive the process. Oh, man, too bad Thomas has grown up until now without that, I commented. Europa just smiled, summoned Thomas, and pulled out his battery pack. I guess that answers that question. And a few keystrokes into his central processing unit, and voila, she powered him back on and gave him a completely new childhood. Minutes later, he jumped up and ran to his room to work on his trigonometry homework. Now he had a more independent childhood, Europa declared, and he seems much happier for it. All I could think of is that Thomas just saved himself $43,000 in therapy bills. This is Steve Robbins. Follow Get It Done Guy on Twitter and Facebook. I can run an awesome productivity workshop for your trade show or management offsite complete with a zombie musical. If you want to know more and see a promo video for the musical, visit worklessanddomore.com. Work less, do more, and have a great life.